Chapter 16. We're almost to the end of uh, book one. This chapter 16 is a pretty awkward chapter um, when you read the first part. But um, yeah, it's kind of strange. Kamalo's in a really bad mood and he has like this cruel, this cruelty streak running down through him right now. Um, and he's pretty angry at the whole situation. So he goes to see the pregnant girl by himself and he finds out that she's only about 16 years old. Um, she's had three men in her life and none of them were her husband, but I think we kind of understand what it means by having three men in her life. Uh, she didn't end up pregnant by herself, right? Um, but Kamalu has the urge to hurt the girl when he hears this stuff. And when he approaches her, she shrinks back in fear. And when he asks her if she wants a fourth husband, she's like, I, I don't think so. I don't think I want another man. And he says, even if I want you, even if I desire you. And she's like, whoa. Well, I guess I would be willing to take, you know, to take you. Um, she said she could be. I, I could be willing. And Kamalu, he looks at her and he feels shame and he just hangs his head. Um, because he's, he's ashamed of his own cruelty. Like, why did he have to do that? You know, he shouldn't have done that, but he did. And he's kind of testing her, but it was the wrong way to do it. Um, then the girl begins crying because she too is ashamed and she feels tormented. Kamala was testing her. Um, and eventually the girl quiets down and he apologizes to her. He asks if she really, really wants to marry Absalom. And she says, yes, yeah, she does want to marry him and be a part of Kamalo's family. She wants to be Kamalo's daughter and live back um, in his homeland. And he asks her, you know, what will she do if she gets sexual desires because there's nothing out there. It's not like the city. Um, there's not a lot of people out there. It's very quiet. She won't have the distractions of a city. So if she does get sexual desires, what is she going to do? And she tells him that, you know what, don't worry about it. I don't want that kind of stuff anymore. And I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you. So he makes her promise to tell him that if she ever changes her mind, like if she doesn't want to live with him anymore, that she'll tell him and that they can make arrangements for her to leave or whatever. But Kamala plans on getting her a room close to where he is staying now because he's trying to graft her into his family since she and Absalom are supposed to get married. And that's the end of chapter 16. Okay, chapter 17. We get to hear a little about what Mrs. Latib is thinking, and that's the woman who's allowing Kamalu, Gertrude, and her son to stay at her house. She likes Kamalu's presence there and likes what he's done for his sister and his nephew. She likes Gertrude, but doesn't like how Gertrude speaks freely to just, you know, any man that comes along. She thinks that's kind of too open, too fresh. She knows that Kamalu is sad about his son's situation and she feels compassion for him. Kamalu asks if the girl, the pregnant girl can stay with them and Mrs. Latib agrees. All of this helping is eating up Kamalu's money and he says that, you know what, he knows his wife wanted a stove and he knows that he needed new um, priest clothing, the black clothes with the white collars, but you know what, um, they're just going to have to sacrifice in order to help these other people. When the girl comes, she's happy. Mrs. Latib talks to her about, um, you know, hanging around Gertrude too much because Gertrude is kind of influencing her in the wrong way. Um, but she talks to the girl about being thankful and obedient because she doesn't want the girl to be led astray and cause more hurt to Kamalo. She's like, you know what? Um, Kamalo has enough pain in his life right now. He doesn't need you to... Um, do something crazy and hurt him even more. Kamalu goes to see his son and Absalom tells him that his two accomplices um, called him a liar and cursed him to his face and basically they want him to take the fall by himself. They're trying to act like they're all innocent and that Absalom is just lying about them being there for whatever reason to get them in trouble because he doesn't want to be the only one to go to jail for this crime. Um, but they basically say that he's lying and that they were never part of that whole situation. Kamala tells Absalom that a lawyer's coming and Absalom begs him to come soon before it is too late. And when he says that, you know, before it's too late, that's some foreshadowing that we have there. Um, something bad is probably going to happen to Absalom. When Kamala leaves, a lawyer is actually coming in. So then Kamala goes back to the mission house 
And a little while later, that same man, the lawyer that came in, he came to the mission house to talk to Father Vincent in Kamalu. And his name is Mr. Carmichael. So Mr. Carmichael, that's the lawyer, he meets up with Kamalu and uh, Father Vincent at the mission house and they discuss the case. Mr. Carmichael will take the case because it is simple and he believes Absalom is telling the truth when he said that he didn't kill the man um, just out of viciousness but because he was scared. It was out of fear. Kamalu is overcome by Mr. Carmichael's kindness in taking the case for free. Uh, and Mr. Carmichael called it Pro Deo, in, uh, and that's Latin for uh, for God. So he's doing, and today we hear the term pro bono, so I'm doing it for free. But in this case, they call it Pro Deo. He's doing it for God because he believes in the case. And that ends book one. So hopefully you've been enjoying Cry the Beloved Country so far. It is a very intriguing story, and um, it only gets better from here. <laughs>